Hi guys, today I'm going to start by painting in the Nature Sketch sketchbook. Um, the reason I'm starting with this one is because there were a few of you who had said that you were interested in this book. So I want to do a comparison between this one and the watercolor book that I showed you yesterday, um, which is this book here. I'm sorry, I'm holding on to my camera right now. Um, this book here, which is the wire bound watercolor field book which is made from certi certified sustainable forests in Malaysia um, this one is made in the US and a portion of the proceeds goes to the American Wildlife Foundation um, both of these are made by Pentalic which is a US company I thought it was Canadian but it is not it is US and I apologize it took me a while to figure it out <laughs> but um, got that straight. So today I'm thinking of doing this painting here of these grapes. So this is from Paint My Photo. I will link it down below in the description bar and let's get started. Since this is done in, um, the photo was taken in landscape format. I'm going to just continue in landscape format and I'm hoping my light is okay here. I'm trying to figure this out, um, and I don't have the correct stand yet. I think I need to fix something, though. Okay, I think I got it straightened out. Um, I, I don't think I'll be doing any heavy washes on this paper. This is 130-pound um, mixed-media paper, which is 25% cotton. Uh, 212 GSM. It's acid free, of course. And I'm going to go ahead and get started by drawing, sketching in the grapes. Well, I thought I had recorded that, but basically I just drew some grapes on. I tried to do it so that you could see it, but then obviously the recording wasn't working at all. So um, there is my sketch, which is pretty cut and dry. I mean, everybody knows how to draw an oval. So. Um, I just threw some leaves on. Some of them are going to be kind of washed out in the background. So let's get started with the painting. My finished sketch of those grapes and I wasn't liking the way it looked so I decided to go over it and pen a little bit in order to try to save the sketch because I just wasn't happy with it and that helped and I put a little bit of white pen on um, here and there and it was okay now the one thing that I will say about the nature sketch book this book here um, being 130 pounds, I was using some pretty heavy washes with it, and um, although it seemed like it was going to warp really bad, um, it dries fairly flat. I can feel a little ripple right here. Um, you can see when I push down on it, it moves my paper. And um, then there's a little spot over here. But otherwise, it lays fairly flat once it's dry. So I was kind of surprised by that. <clears throat> I thought that it was going to be all wavy like my moleskin gets. And it was not. <clears throat> now I really put this paper... <coughs> excuse me. I really put this paper through the test with the amount of water I was using. 
because I was using my um my number 12 silver black velvet brush and as you know squirrel brushes hold a ton a ton of water they make um sable seem like a lightweight because of the amount of liquid they hold so uh but I love the way that they'll hold a point much better than sable does so um that's why I prefer squirrel a lot of people swear by by sable but um anyway I wasn't going to use a lot of water and I thought you know what I'm just going to treat it like I would treat watercolor paper and it actually held up to the test fairly well. Now, while I was working with it, it got a little more difficult because I was getting a little bit of the waves, you know, and valleys and stuff, the dips in it, and I didn't want my color to pool. And it really didn't pool anywhere, which I was surprised by. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and my next painting I will do in the field book, and we'll see how this one stands up to my tests. This one is is much heavier um, paper, so it should stand up to it pretty well. So if you're one that does not use a ton of water, this book might be for you. Um, I believe on Amazon, if you go back to my previous um, video, the one that I did yesterday on the three books, um, all three of these, um, then you can see in my description the prices. This one is actually the most expensive out of the three. Um, this one was $12.99. I think this one was, oh gosh, I want to say ten. Seventy nine or eleven or I don't know, and then this one was ten twenty five. So these are actually very inexpensive. If you live in the U.S., you can get these books very inexpensively, and with their great environmental consciousness and animal consciousness and the quality of the paper and everything else, you cannot beat this company. I, you know, just hands down, I think they're the best. And I will praise them until I can't speak anymore. So um, anyway, that's that's it for this one. And we'll see how um, tomorrow goes. You can see the rippling when I hold it like this, how much rippling there was in the paper. And that was by adding a lot of water. So like I said, if you're one that loves to sketch and you use... Uh, wet on dry technique. I was doing a lot of washing and mixing my color on the paper as you saw. That requires a lot more water so if you don't do that this paper should hold up just fine. Um, very nice book. I, I am pleased. For me though I think that I will probably stick with the watercolor books only because I do like them better. Um, I like to use a little more water when I'm painting. It's just my style. So everybody's different. Um, I know one of our other viewers, Eve, she she likes the Moleskine books. And that's great. But she admits that she doesn't use as much water as I use in my painting. She uses hers more for like sketch style, wet on dry water coloring. And... Um, and it works great for her. So, And it probably helps to keep the cost down a little bit. If you're using a lower weight paper, it's going to cost less money overall. Um, or you get more bang for your buck. You get more pages for the price. So um, anyway, that's it. Um, oh, I used one of my little stamps in the corner here. <laughs> I just put the Sweet Life on there since these were grapes. I have a date stamp too that I'm going to use, but these are some of the stamps that I, um, one of the stamps that I got for Christmas, and it has all sorts of phrases on it. So I just stamped the Sweet Life on there. All gone. This one that I got here is a, um, a new brush, a new style of brush to me. It's called a Deerfoot, I think. They call it a Stippler, Series 35, half inch. And it is a deer, uh, it looks like a deer foot. And you can do some really cool stippling techniques with it. I thought it was going to be smaller when I got the half inch because this looks more like a three quarter. But I wonder when you get it wet how small.
small, it makes it... No, it still looks big to me. Huh. Okay. Then I got this one, which is a Sable Blend Dagger. This is the Series 772. I've seen some Urban Sketchers using this brush, and so I wanted to give it a shot. I try to stay away from synthetic blends. I'm just rinsing off the sizing here so that I can feel how how it really feels because it's stiff from the from the glycerin or whatever they use to to size these. Now, if you are wondering, a dagger is a little different than a sword brush. Here, I'll show you the difference. These are different um, brands but it doesn't matter because they all pretty much do the same thing. You can see the difference in the shape of a dagger versus a sword. A sword has a longer point on it, just like a sword would. I'm just reshaping it so you can see what it looks like when you're using it. That's what a sword looks like. And then this is what the dagger looks like. The belly of the brush is wider on a dagger than it is on a sword brush. Well, I'm going to do a video on these, so um, you guys are just getting the first look, those of you who watch this video. This is a, um, I got more of the Eclipse brushes. I am loving these, their Eclipse brushes. They are just wonderful. I thought these were wood, but they, they sound plastic. I wonder if they are. That'd be awesome because then they don't chip if you get them wet. This is a half inch flat, um, or a size seven, I was guessing on how, how big it is. Um, let's see here. I thought it would be about a half inch. Just under. It's about three eighths. No, 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 no. If I look at it from here, it's a half inch, yeah. So a number seven is a half inch flat. I had to guess that because I didn't know. This is a size 8 round. I wanted a bigger round. And this is a size 2 rigger. Their riggers are a little shorter. Maybe because it's a 2, but I was expecting it to be more of a, a longer brush. But this is a nice stiff one. It's got got great spring to it. See that spring on that brush? I don't know if you can see it from the angle. Look at that. You can feel it reverberating down the handle of the brush. But anyway, those are the brushes I got. So, pretty cool. So, I will do a video on these, and I will show you these as well as some of my other brushes very soon. Somebody requested a brush video. I tried to do it once. No, actually, I think I tried three times, and I gave up because it was just way too long. So I thought, I'm going to pick out some of my favorite brushes and then just show them to you. Um, but I haven't gotten to it because everybody was wanting to see paintings. I had so many reviews and stuff going on that I haven't done a painting in so long. But you got one today. So anyway, everybody have a great day. I will talk to you soon. If you're new to my channel, thanks for stopping by. Please subscribe. Um, if you'd like what you see. Anyway, everybody have a terrific day, and I will talk to you very soon. Bye-bye.